we took a group of perfectly healthy adults and we assigned them to one of two experimental groups, a sleep group and a sleep deprivation group. Now, the sleep group, they're going to get a full eight hours of slumber, but the deprivation group, we're going to keep them awake in the laboratory under full supervision. Um, there's no naps, there's no caffeine, uh, miserable for everyone involved. And then the next day, we're going to place those participants inside an MRI scanner and we're going to have them try and learn a whole list of new facts as we're taking snapshots of brain activity. And then we're going to test them to see how effective that learning has been. And that's what you're looking at on the vertical axis here, the amount of learning. So the higher up you are, the more that you learn. And when you put those two groups head to head, what you find is a quite significant 40% deficit in the ability of your brain to make new memories without sleep. And I think this should be frightening, considering what we know is happening to sleep in our education populations right now. Just to place that in context, it would be the difference between acing an exam and failing it miserably, 40%. And we've gone on to discover what goes wrong within your brain to produce these types of learning disabilities. And there's a structure that sits on the left and the right side of your brain called the hippocampus. And you can see it here in these sort of orange-yellow colors. Um, think of the hippocampus like the informational inbox of your brain. It's very good at receiving new memory files and then holding on to them. And when we looked at this structure in those people who'd had a full night of sleep here in green, we saw lots of healthy learning-related activity. Yet in those people who were sleep-deprived, we actually couldn't find any significant signal whatsoever it's almost as though sleep deprivation had shut down your memory inbox and any new incoming files, they were just being bounced. You couldn't effectively commit new experiences to memory. And parenthetically, if you'd like to know what life is like uh, without a functioning hippocampus, just watch the movie Memento. I suspect some of you have seen this movie, I won't spoil a punchline, but this gentleman suffers brain damage. And from that point forward, he can no longer make any new memories. He's what we call densely amnesic. The part of his brain that was damaged was the hippocampus, and it is the very same structure that sleep deprivation will attack and block your brain's capacity for new learning. So that's the bad that can happen if I take sleep away from you. But let me just come back to that control group for a second here in green. Remember those folks that got a full eight hours of uh, slumber? Well, we can ask a very different question. What is it about the physiological quality of your sleep when you do get it that restores and enhances your learning and memory ability each and every day? And by placing electrodes all over the head, what we've discovered is that there are big, powerful brainwaves that happen during the very deepest stages of sleep that have riding on top of them these spectacular bursts of electrical activity that we call sleep spindles. And it's the combined quality of these deep sleep brainwaves that acts like a file transfer mechanism at night, shifting memories from a short-term vulnerable reservoir to a more permanent long-term storage site within your brain, and therefore protecting them and making them safe. 